Okay, so Valley, we are on season one. We are on episode seven. This one is entitled Gossip of the Group. Okay. AKA Janet. And we do. Yeah, mm-hmm. we do start this episode where we left off last week back at that toxic hair loss party table. Yeah, the aftermath. Where all that shit just went down in the hallway, honey. We mm-hmm. had a nipple out. We had Brittany, who the next day has a red injured eye, by the way. <gasps> oh, I didn't even notice. Yeah, she had a red injured eye. And she's like, oh, I don't know how that happened. Well, Jesse pushed you into a wall on his way to attack Kristen physically. And you were drunk. That's how that happened, drunky. Yeah. Um, so that all just happened. Michelle and Jesse come back into the party room. People are just like... I'm over this. Yeah. Can we just have my meal? This is crazy. Right. And this is where Michelle and Jesse do what we knew they were going to do, which is basically say, okay, let's ice Kristen out. Anywhere I'm going to be, they're not allowed to be. Uh, and of course, Janet's bitch ass is like, yeah, any um opportunity I have, I'm not going to invite her ever again. Are we in high school? Yes. Are we in middle school? Yes. Like, can't we just sit down and like have an actual productive conversation where I can tell you like, look, I realized I didn't say that right. right. I get it. Um, But this is actually what I heard. And this is actually what happened. And I want to apologize for all of the collateral damage. Can we just make this right? Like, that's what adults do. Uh-huh. But these people can't do that. No. They're 40-something-year-old losers who live in the valley who want to gossip because that's all they have going on in their lives. And pretend to be rich. Yes. Mm-hmm. But when they're all miserable with their lives. Like, Jesse and Michelle acting like they're, like, the 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 heads of this group on a show that would is only famous because of Kristen and yes, Jack. Their celebrity is only possible because of Kristen and Jack. Literally, Jax. nobody knows who you are or cares who you guys are without Kristen and Yeah, Jax. you're actually really unlikable. Yeah. And I would never want to know you in real life. Ever. The only reason I'm watching you and I am wrapped <laughs> is because of Kristen and Jack. 100%. So at the end of the day, whatever she did, I mean, unless it was really, really bad, but I don't consider this to be that. Mm -mm. Like at the end of the day, you owe her some allegiance for that. And that says volumes about you. Like the next day when we're at Jesse and Michelle's and she's got her stink face on and they're trying to talk about Kristen again. I'm just like, you guys are so miserable and unhappy Mm -hmm. and you're taking it out on Kristen because she's a ding dong. Yep. But it's becoming very evident where the problem is. And it's in your home. Yeah, 100%. It's with you too. And that's what's so stupid because at this dinner, that's where Jesse says like, oh, Kristen said that I would leave Michelle. But no, actually, it would be Michelle leaving me. So I'm like, okay, the cat's out of the bag now. Mm -hmm. But you're mad at Kristen for saying it, even though you're also spilling it. Like, Right, you said it at the pool party at Jax's. Like, this is conversations that have already happened why are we acting so surprised miss me with that because she misstated it yeah but essentially what she's saying is true like the spirit of what she was saying was true yes that they have problems and so then when we have the next day where it's jesse michelle at their house and he's got that stupid baseball cap on Mm -hmm. him and he's like kind of in his feelings like he's all insecure well he was in his feelings at the hair loss party table yeah because he had just seen his life coach or whoever that dude was right and he's just like coming to the realization that this marriage is probably not salvageable at all yeah and so the next day when they're having that conversation he's still in those feelings but he's he strikes me as desperate to keep it together with michelle oh totally yeah he's one of those guys that like wants the white picket fence wants the illusion that he's got his life together but it's really miserable and he even kind of says this when in his talking head when he's like you know i grew up in a family where everybody stayed together married like my grandparents were married for a million years my parents were married for a million years when you make a commitment you stick with it but i'm thinking to myself a lot of those marriages like back in the day with the boomers and all that they were miserable too Mm -hmm. like they just grew up in a generation where divorce was so taboo and people didn't think that that was a good thing to do so they stayed in miserable marriages so he learned that and you want to stay in a miserable marriage with a wife who fucking hates you right and takes mega pot shots at you like when you were dancing with that older lady at the hair loss party and she's like you can have him like, you don't need to say that out loud with your words. Right. Much less on camera. Yeah. Like, you're humiliating this man for the sport of it. Yes. Something's wrong with you, Michelle. You suck. Yep. They both suck. He sucks, but she sucks. I'm like, who do I hate more? Mm, 
today I hate Michelle more. <laughs> today. Because she's such a liar. Because yeah. she is a cheater. Yeah. And like even in her interstitial, when the producer asks her, well, is there a secret that she's actually holding for you? She's like, um... No, everybody can sniff a cheater. Mm -hmm. You're a cheater. Mm -hmm. Kristen's right. That's what she was protecting. And you're trying to hoodwink us to believe that that's not happening. Yes. But it is. Oh, 100%. You're an awful person. 1,000%. Mm -hmm. And even Jesse's picking up on that. He's worried about her cheating because he's talking about how she doesn't post on social media anymore, especially when she goes out with her friends. She used to post all the time. Shady. And now she doesn't. And now she puts her phone face down on the table. Because she doesn't want him looking at who's texting Mm -hmm. her. And so he's picking up on that. And I kind of feel bad for him on that because nobody deserves that. But at the same time, it's like, oh, God, he sucks so bad. How could she not leave you? And I think Kristen said last week something like, I knew about this one year relationship. But like, I'm in full support of it because he's such a trash bag. Yeah, exactly. And he doesn't treat her well either. Like him saying, like, I'll do whatever it takes to make it work besides be a better person yeah like be a better husband like or stop yelling at her when she's doing the laundry or making your cappuccino god you piece of shit seriously you're a terrible person so unaware Mm -hmm. get off my television yep but also make a spectacle so yeah (laughs) and also continue (laughs) continue (laughs) i want him back listen season two i want jesse and michelle back jesse or divorcing divorcing trying to split assets who gets to go to capri (gasps) Oh my god! And I take Isabella, so petty. and like she's already dating, he's already dating. I would totally watch that. Of course, <laughs> I would totally it's watch everything. That. They are so turbo toxic. They are, but I love it. I do love it. I love it. <laughs> it's the best kind of trash. Mm-hmm. And then we have Jason and Janet at their house, and Janet, a gossiping ass hoe. God, oh my god, she's Insane. she thinks she is pulling the wool over our eyes she (laughs) thinks we're all watching her and the fact that she's pregnant and heavy with child heavy with child child. like that we're thinking oh my god she's so innocent and beautiful what a beatific new mother to be yeah she can do no wrong no bitch we see you we clock you we're raccoons we got monocles yeah we're watching we are are a stink ass ho ass petty ass gossiper and you know what was so fascinating to me Hmm. is like the side eyes from her own husband dude her husband's interstitials when he's alone on the couch he's like (laughs) she's like she left her full-time job when she got pregnant because of course (laughs) she left her full-time job but i didn't know she'd have this full-time job Mm. as a gossip And this guy's a lawyer, like a very practical guy who's sitting there listening to his wife just gabble on about nothing, about other people's problems. And he's like, literally in the moment, like, why do we care about this? Why are you involved in this? Mm -hmm. Why do you know about any of this? And she's like, well, because um, Michelle told me and um, because Jasmine told me this and I have to hear from Jax. And And I feel a sense of responsibility because I've heard it now. And like, I really should do something about it. Like, well, first of all, you are the originator. Uh You are the one who said the Republican LGBT toxic shit. Uh And you probably said racist. Yeah, true. You probably said racist. You're the one who started all of this shit and now you're concerned about all the people who are affected by it <laughs> i know it's so good it's like what jasmine said like a couple episodes ago where she's like there's only one queen bee of gossip and it's not Kristen. i'm like yeah we've been knowing mm-hmm. it's janet's bitch ass i just want it to come out i want it to come out that it yeah. is janet that's mm-hmm. saying all this stuff and even jacks knows it's janet yes he says it in his talking head like yes. she's doing my job for me and he's smiling because he's like yes like right my plan to have a delicious first season of the valley so i can make money because i'm broke as fuck is working. right well and later on when janet and jason have the audacity to go over to jacks and britney's house to confront them about the gossip that was crazy <laughs> jacks is on the couch she's like who the fuck do you think you are calling me out for my gossipy ways you are the queen of that yes the queen gossip janet we're not buying it and i was reading somewhere online they were just talking about how online janet is Mm -hmm. and how in fact and this is not a fact it's all alleged but in fact janet was a super fan of vanderpump rules she lived in ohio so she's a midwest girl lived in ohio and flew out intentionally to la and put herself next to sheena shea and then became friends with Sheena Shea, inserted herself into the Vanderpump Rules group. And we did see on Vanderpump Rules in previous seasons, like she was kind of orbiting every now and again, we did see Janet. 
But like, like Brittany did. Brittany Cartwright did the very same thing with Jax. So Janet inserted herself into this friend group on purpose. Wow. She's the ultimate clout goblin. <gasps> and she lives to cause chaos in this group. Oh. And center and platform herself. My God. So she's online, chronically online. Zillowing everybody's house, That's following so all of the rumors of all of her castmates. So you don't think she's reading right now all of social media's opinion about her, which, by the way, is bad. Oh, I hope she's listening to this podcast. Me too, because she I thought didn't. she was going to do something oh. on the Valley. But like everybody hates her as much, if not more, than they hate Michelle. Oh, my God. And doesn't she have her own podcast? I think she just recently had Michelle as a guest on her own podcast. I didn't I watch it or anything. No, nor I do care. I listen. I know that she used to podcast with Sheena. I think she used to be second chair on Shenanigans. Stop. Something it. like that. Yes. Yes, oh girl. Oh, my God. This Cloud is gonna, Goblin. Dude, this is going to backfire on her so bad. I mean, it already is on Valley, but like, oh, my God. But like, there are these moments of clarity with Jason when he's just like watching his wife talk about this and he's just like, who the are fuck? you? Yeah. Like, why are we doing this? Like, we have a child that's about to come into this world. We've got to get this nursery together. And this is what you're focusing on. Yeah. Like, you can see the character of your wife, can't you, Jason? It's almost like he didn't know that this was mm -hmm. who she was. Until she was activated. Yes. Oh, my God. I'm going to be on a show. And he's like, what the fuck the is battery wrong in with her you? back. Yep. Yeah. Crazy. Toxic. So toxic. So good. And then we have like a little scene with Luke and Kristen going to the doctor, the fertility doctor yeah. to check her follicles on her ovaries. She got hair on her ovaries. <laughs> she got enough hair. She got enough hair. For a hairdo on her ovaries. She's all worried. Sorry. I'm just going to be very blunt and mean. Okay. Because she's like, I don't know why I'm not getting pregnant. I'm like, you're 40. Yeah. You're well beyond a geriatric pregnancy were you to get pregnant right now. Like, can we stop acting like that's like a normal It's a age? mystery. <laughs> And it's I'm like, mystery. I'm really glad that your ovaries are not dried up and shriveled up and everything. That's great. Like, I do hope she can get pregnant mm -hmm. if she wants to do that and stuff. But I'm like, can we stop acting like it's so crazy that you're not pregnant at 40 something? I don't know. Yeah. A little drama. Yeah. But, but she's got it. some hair on her ovaries <laughs> and the ability exists for them to get pregnant. And side note, they do end up getting pregnant. I don't know if we're going to see that. Um, is she pregnant right now? No, she's not. Oh. She had a miscarriage. Oh, Sorry. that's right. That's right. So, but I don't know if we're going to see her pregnancy. Oh, that would be sad. A little bit of her journey. Yeah, on the valley. I always that would forget. That would be really sad. Maybe that's so mean that I said that. It's not mean. No, but I mean, it's also true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then we have Jackson Brittany at their house. He's shushing her and telling her to shut up. And she's like, if he shushes me one more time. Listen, I'm team Jax there because Same. it's Brittany her dumbass mama, yeah. her grandma, and then you've got the speech therapist trying to work with Cruz like six feet away yes. and they're just yimmy yamma with their fucking accent. I know. And Jack said, like, can y'all just shut up? Can you move it somewhere else? They're trying to do something for Cruz. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, don't tell me to shut up. Whatever. Dumb. Yeah. But then yeah. Janet and Jason come over and then this is where Janet's like, got to get all of the tea. And she looks so fucking desperate, dude. She's like asking Jax, like, so what did what did you tell her? What did you tell Michelle? Was it you what did you tell Michelle or no, something? No, no, no. What did you tell Jasmine. Jasmine? But don't you think she already knows what the rumor is? I think everybody knows what this rumor is. Everybody yeah. has already heard it. So Janet... Why are you trying so hard? Mm, but she, she wants, wants to, to have know. a moment. Yeah. She wants to be on camera. And so she's like, well, why are you saying this? And what is this about? And also, Brittany, they said that you knew about it and you're the one who said it. Yeah. And Brittany. She kind of outed Brittany, too. Because Brittany, Ooh. before that, first she focused on Jax. Like, Jax, mm -hmm. why are you saying this? And Brittany's like, oh, he knows when I hate when he does that. Yeah. And then she's like, and we heard that you're the one who told Jax. Like, it came from you. And Brittany's like, oh, but I don't. I don't talk about my friends. No, I don't say nothing. I don't want to be involved. Brittany looked pissed yeah, she that did. she got outed like she that. Did. She did not look I loved happy. it. And Jax kind of looked pissed too because in his interstitials, he's like, Janet's acting like she's too good for this. Like mm -hmm. she wouldn't have done the same thing that I did, but she's the queen of all of this. Right. She's orchestrating all of it. Facts, yes. I can't wait for that to come out to the rest of the group because I want people to start I don't know if it is. I, I want wonder if it is. for her. It's going to bite her in the butt one I day. don't like her. Me neither. And then we have Dana, Danny and Nia at the park. This is where she calls some lady. Sally, who's her sister-in-law. And um, 
Here's my thought about this, Beatrice. Like, I'm worried about Danny and Nia because I like them so much. Yeah. I think they're people of actual character Mm -hmm. and integrity. He's like a great role model for a husband, especially in this group. And she just seems like such a loving, beautiful woman and mom and wife. And I'm like, if you guys don't do something trashy soon, I fear you're not going to be on season two. Well, and I kind of don't want them to be because I feel like they're too good and I don't want them to be ruined by this vapid group of friends that are just toxic as fuck. And they just love to cause chaos and destruction in everybody's lives. Like, I like Danny and Nia. Yeah, how did they even become friends with Jax in the first place? I, I don't, don't understand. Know. It does not make sense. It does not compute. I want them to move to Santa Clarita or wherever they're going to move and just stay there in the suburbs yeah two things are true like i love them i think they're so awesome i actually like listening to them Me and too. Uh, learning about them but at yeah. the same time i need my reality tv to be in Facts. the dumpster at the bottom with the juices it needs yeah. to be stank <laughs> yeah. and these people don't bring stanky no they, they don't. don't they don't they bring real life problems that are sad she's got ppd y'all she's got postpartum it's depression really it's supposed to resolve itself within a matter of weeks or like a couple of months but she's still got issues and I so know. now she's gonna have to go and get the zoloft or something i know she's gonna have to go and get the antidepressants <laughs> Did you have to get something? Get that Xanax. Yeah. Oh, I wish I could get some. How do I get some Xanax? (laughs) If anybody knows how to get some, DM us. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) But not. (laughs) No, it has a fentanyl in it, honey. We don't want the Xanax. We don't want the fentanyl. We don't. But anyway, she's a nice woman. I feel bad for her. I hope she gets help. Same. And then we have Jax and Brittany going to some sex tantric, tantric expert like, uh, the plaths did yeah on season two <laughs> they did <laughs> poor ethan trying anything to keep his relationship together and Jax is doing the same thing but is he does he really want to keep his relationship together with britney i mean correct me if i'm wrong everybody listening and or watching but that man seems disgusted by her uh, like yeah. that man does not seem to want to touch her Mm-mm. love on her Mm-mm. kiss her, much less talk to her Mm -mm. and i wouldn't either to the latter because her voice is so grating nails on a chalkboard man and she's always interrupting people Mm -hmm. and talking over people with that yuck 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 (laughs) kentucky (laughs) like oh my gosh shut up no for real he's got to be at the end of his rope with her oh totally i think he's doing all of this for the cameras and that's what's so fucked up about it and kind of diabolical that he's like feigning like he pretend like he cares about his marriage and he's like yeah she's the mother of my child i love her very much she's my rock she's my soulmate i guess like he says these things and i'm like you don't believe it at all dude yeah i don't think he's yeah i don't think he feels that in his insides no um but then when they pan to her and she starts talking about their relationship well, it's interesting because they're doing the soul gazing yeah when they're supposed to be staring Looking into each, each other's eyes. eyes and like really connecting on the soul of oh. <laughs> And so then they cut over to his interstitial and everything he's saying about her is glowing. Very it's sweet. Very sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, I And it was very nice. Yeah. And then they cut to her and she's like, well, he hasn't been taking care of me and he hasn't made me feel like a sexy woman. I don't think he likes my body yaddy yaddy no more. <laughs> I got all these stretch marks and this loose hanging skin and of course this voice as well. And I just don't understand. He needs to be doing more, trying harder. I'm like... Brittany, Ooh. what are you bringing to the table, though? Ooh. Okay, you can wear lingerie and in heels, but I'm like, are you bringing rapport, right. communication, like spiritual intimacy into this relationship? Right. You weirdo. No. no, she's not. And that mouth, by the way, uncensored. <laughs> Well, and I think her self worth, like all these other women, is like tied to their her body and her sex appeal. And she, they flash back to some of her uh, earlier uh, seasons uh, of VPR. Back from uncensored. Yeah, we're back from uncensored, so we can't talk about that no more. What? Uh, what I was just talking about. I know. I and by the way, it. if you want to hear our uncensored conversation, you gotta you, you gotta, gotta go. You gotta to go to Patreon because when we get crazy like that and say inappropriate things that are not politically correct, yeah. We can't share that on YouTube or on our podcast platform. But back to poor Brittany and her body image. Yeah. No, I think she feels super insecure. And obviously Jax isn't helping that because he's not fucking her. He don't like her. He's not telling her He don't want to touch her. He's probably telling her some nasty shit. I mean, we've talked about this a couple episodes ago that it came out that he's been putting her down and talking bad about her. So I'm sure she feels really horrible about herself. But I think... It's because she's t- like her sense of self is tied to her body and her sex appeal because they flash back to some of the earlier seasons of her on VPR where she was like just this hot, tight little thing. 
and I'm not saying she's not hot right now. I'm just saying like obviously our bodies change and she you know, was whatever. different looking. Yeah. Yeah. And when we have kids, especially our bodies are going to change forever. Like I get it. I totally get it. But like, uh, why were you with Jax in the first place? You he know who this on you is in the first place. He was a known quantity. That's what I'm saying. He's a fucking cheater, period. You knew that as a Vanderpump Rules fan. Like, yet you sought him out in Vegas and yeah. you intentionally hooked up with him. And so you know who this man is. Yeah. And what's important to him. Yeah. And then even at the tantric sex, whatever, she's not in it. Like for a good reason, like she's mad at him. Like mm-hmm. she's not even she there. She couldn't to look like, at him. I love him. Did yeah. you notice that she was looking down a lot and looking away mm-hmm. a lot? Mm-hmm. That was interesting. So I don't they know don't what have that, that means. Intimacy. They don't have that connection. And he was looking right at her. He was. And I don't want to like Jax. No, me neither. I don't want to root for Jax. I don't want to believe Jax. But like he was looking right at her, leaned into her, and she was uncomfortable. Yeah, she was very uncomfortable. And like maybe there's a small part of Jax that does actually want to make it work with her because he has been with her for 10 years they do have a kid together and he seems like a good dad i mean he does and maybe he has changed and grown up a little bit a little bit but i don't it's still jacks taylor yeah so his reputation follow, follows him and he's kind of a clout goblin and even on the valley he's producing all of these storylines to distract from his mm-hmm. crumbling marriage which who called that out i forget who actually mm. was it janet yeah somebody i think it was janet yeah, 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 who said yeah. like he's doing flashbangs over here to deflect away from what's actually happening in his life over here mm-hmm. which we've all been saying and we can see that's true mm-hmm. yeah two things can be true at once yep. so yeah their whole sex soul gazing tantric thing do you want to soul gaze very right now? cringe no <laughs> i'm soul gazing at you. i'll soul gaze with your daughter i'm later. soul gazing at you right now. why <laughs> we both have souls i'm Not gazing at your soul <laughs> Well, we're not, I didn't say tantric. You notice I didn't say that? Soul But amazing. I can see into your soul. Look at me. <laughs> why why won't you look at me? Zoom in, dude. Uh, Jesus God. crackers. Sorry I'm drinking. Yeah, you, you know are. How I get. She gets crazy when I she's do. drinking. Lord. Oh, God. And then the guys. Oh, my God. This was so cringe. Jason, oh, yeah. Luke, and Jax, right? Yeah, a motley crew. They all go to the bowling alley, which I thought was hella cringe because like contrast that with vpr where they're going to these like really nice restaurants yes. and they're going on a ferry ride in san francisco and then <laughs> these losers on the, the budget valley for the valley are going yeah. to the bowling alley yeah i thought that was funny i mean i loved bowl do you i loved it i love it oh god it's i didn't even, even know that oh my god it's so much fun when you go and you're like it is very white trash stuff. so i can see it for you totally yeah and you get the bowling not the bowling alley nachos i didn't mean it I you just, did mean no it. i mean i i didn't you're mean so it. fucking judgy i'm very bougie but yeah. you know i love you more than anything whatever i don't mean it us simpletons yeah like the pleasures of you know bowling or yeah, going yeah. mini golf of course it's fun i hate to mini golf i hate mini and i don't like bowling either because of all the germs like Why? how do you put your feet into a pair of shoes with all those fucking germs in them? and about? then touch bowling balls where people have herpes you go grocery shopping two? don't you you go grocery shopping you go to the restaurant that's all that that's way more germy i never thought of it that way but I have to go to the grocery store. I have to get food. I don't have to bowl, bitch. <laughs> I don't have to pick up this bowling ball with herpes sim- simplex one and two. Oh my god, plus herpes the, the human pampalona virus. Plus herpes all of that. Bowling yeah, ball. you stick your fucking fingers and then you put that in your nose. What now you got a cold you, sore. What about when you go to the Alamo Draft House? You think people aren't fucking or doing blowjobs and stuff? I at the feel Alamo like Draft House? they are sanitizing. I feel like I'm paying more, so they're sanitizing that. Whatever. Anyway, I'm just thinking, I don't bowl, so I don't know. Okay. I didn't know you You're did like to bowl, but now I, now I know. But I you did it. grow up next to a meth lab. I did. Which exploded. I did. That's a story for That's another That's a true time. story. <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> anyway. Okay, sorry. The guys go bowling. <laughs> just to grill Luke. Yeah, just to confront him about how Kristen's a bitch. <laughs> Kristen's a gossiping, lying bitch basically and luke is like trying to defend her but at the same time he's like yeah i get that kristen shouldn't have said that she said it wrong like i'll talk to her mm-hmm. and they're like yeah you gotta fucking talk to her you gotta put your woman in her place okay Jax. i know like, calm down out. well at some point Jax calls kristen a liar and then luke is like well you are a self-proclaimed pathological liar so like don't be calling kristen out and Jax is like well that was 10 years ago i have the right to change and okay. to grow and to evolve all right Tom like, Sandoval. Okay. He got really triggered. He did. By being called out for being an actual liar. And he's lying on this episode. He lied in the last episode when he sat down with Jasmine and right. said that it was Kristen who originated this rumor when it was him. Yes. 
Like, so, just own up your past. You're a liar. Yeah. Yeah. He's kind of like Sandoval in that way, where it's like, if anybody says that you do anything wrong, you got to deflect and get all triggered and get all mad yeah. and be like, well, I've grown. <laughs> Like, no, you haven't. It's okay to Obviously admit that you are a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're all dumb and young and we all make mistakes. He's old. He's 45. Well, yeah. Yeah. But I'm saying when he was younger. Yes. When he was younger, Jax Taylor, when he was 30. But he's still lying. He's <laughs> yeah. still doing all the he's same things, lying. though. And I yeah. dare say he's probably still cheating. Totally. So. I'd love to see that. I hope well. we do. I hope Maybe so season too. two. That'd be because great. Because you know that Brittany unfollowed Jax mm-hmm. and the PR person. And yeah. now Jax has also unfollowed the PR person. So there was some fallout there. Some Ooh. happened. I would love to see that on the Valley season two, which I believe has picked up cameras. <gasps> yes. So they are filming this summer, unlike Vanderpump Rules. Okay, I'm down for so that. So maybe we're going to get some of this drama i hope so i would recap that with you i like okay, it well, all right well let's make plans <laughs> okay and then after their weird bowling date then we have danny nia michelle and jesse going to dinner okay and this is just kind of where they're talking yeah. about like buying a house buying a car but then michelle's bitching more about Kristen. michelle like can't wait oh my God. for like an opening in the conversation to insert her invective and vitriol against Kristen. like nia did you know nia's an angel yeah she's untouched by evil yes she's a holy beautiful angel on this planet and so michelle the devil that she is <laughs> cannot wait for just a moment to start gossiping yes. about Kristen and Nia starts crying. I know. If ever there was an empath in this group, it's actually Nia who 100%. can feel the poisonous, toxic energy rolling. Yeah. Undulating off of Michelle and Jesse. I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> but like she can feel that. She starts crying and she's like, I'm sorry, but like I don't have room on my plate to hear about your bullshit. Plus, I know you're a cheater and I'm just filming because I have to. For real, I just need the paycheck. So, so I can, can buy a house. We can buy a house. So I can get a house on a mini. Poor Nia and Danny. Even though Danny's like, we need to go live up in Santa Clarita. And she's like, that's like a million miles away from LA. No, it's not. It's 45 minutes. I have no idea. I know where it's at. I it's 45 minutes. Cannot be arsed. To it's know like about maybe that. an hour. I'm like, yes, get out of LA. Get out of this toxic yeah, hell. You have three hole. children. Don't Seriously. you want to like be a little bit removed from this God. assholery? For real. I felt really bad for Nia. I feel bad for her in general because it doesn't seem like. She has very many friends, especially not in this friend group, that actually give a shit about the fact that she's going through postpartum depression because all of them are just being toxic yeah, well, ass they don't bitches. Care. They're all narcissists. Yes. They all suck ass. Mm-hmm. And then we have Kristen and Luke at their apartment. And this is where yeah. he's talking to her yeah. about her behavior. What did you think about that, Beatrice? I actually appreciated Luke being very direct with mm-hmm. her and being like, look, I love you. Like, I know you didn't mean any well. I mean, harm but you need to be careful with how you say things and you need to make sure you're saying it correctly so you don't cause more of a shit storm and when you apologize stop saying i'm sorry but mm-hmm. and she's like yeah i know i need to do that but right i'm sorry immediately but. does exactly that girl and was a bit passive aggressive and uh-huh. flippant slash dismissive with his like very reasonable concerns about your behavior and how it's impacting him. And he's trying to tell you like, I don't even know like how we can continue this way if you're going to always be like this. Yeah. And he's like, I don't know if I can do this with you. And so Kristen hears the implicit, not threat, but like what he's trying to say, which is like, I don't know if I can stay with you if you don't change this behavior, which freaks her out. Mm -hmm. And so she then just says, okay, I get it. Yeah. All right. I'll change my behavior. But she doesn't actually get it. No. And he calls her out for that too. Yeah. He's like, I don't feel she like I'm getting it. through to you. And I like felt kind of bad for Luke because it's like kind of a reality check of like this woman that you, he is in love with, I think. Mm-hmm. He does want her to be the mother of his child and everything, but she's kind of crazy. And like she's choosing to stay with these groups of friends that are really toxic and terrible for her. She's been in therapy for nine years and wow. it's still acting like this yes that's wild to me mm-hmm. like i can't relate to that i'm like how have you not grown i mean maybe she has grown mm-hmm. up a bit but i'm like girl you have this nice young man yes who's blowing your back out yeah apparently i mean he's valuing you he he is defending you at every single turn right and you're putting him in these situations that he should not be in exactly. to defend you because you're opening your mouth and you're being dumb with it yes and he's being what a healthy partner should be which is somebody who can call you out on your bullshit and yes. be like yeah you know you, you did something wrong there but i love you i'm still gonna be there for you you just gotta change your shit 
just be better. Fair. Do better. God. Yeah, but that offends her, I think. Yeah. I think it kind of shocks her, but hopefully, like, she'll let it sit, and then she'll come back around. She'll be like, you know what? You're right. Hopefully. I'm going to change my behavior. This is how, and I'm going to make it better. Hopefully that, because they're still together. Yeah. So we I'm assume, hoping yeah, for that, we because that I do like them together. I think he's good for her. Yeah. And then last but not least, we have Brittany and Jax. Okay. They're having a date night, uh, and they're going to bang, uh, and Janet, Are they? Um, no, Janet and Jason have to come over and watch Cruise, right? Which Brittany is automatically unhappy about because her Mima and her Mama were there from Kentucky, right? To watch Cruise this whole entire time, and yeah. Jax didn't take the opportunity to do it. He waited until they left, okay, to go take this date. And then Janet and Jason, their dumbasses, have to come over and they're like, "What do we do with the two-year-old? <laughs> like, you're literally about to have a baby. Like, yeah, it's not that hard, but yeah. whatever." Brittany and Jax go to some penthouse suite. Yes. It looks very nice. Sort of. I mean, I don't know. Oh my God, you're so bougie. Blacklight it. You're so I fucking can't, judgy. I don't try. Yeah, I've seen better. Girl. But whatever. There's a chef that comes over, but like with pre-made food that they're just heating up Lobster with like a rolls. blowtorch or whatever. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but whatever. I'm like, it's fancy for them and I appreciate that. And so they sit so down. Judgy. I'm sorry. They sit down at In their table. dumpster and you whatever. feel the right to judge these people Listen, on their fancy I'm just saying. Penthouse. You no bravo's paying for it <laughs> yeah. bravo's arranging all do you think Jax taylor did that no, he did he none of that it. so they show up they sit down at their dinner table mm-hmm. they start a conversation yeah and i think Jax sort of opens the conversation about the bar right yeah and he's like look the bar is going to take me away from the house like three to four nights a week so i'm really not sure if we want to bring a baby into the situation right now plus cruz He's got this speech therapy thing. Yeah. And I really want to focus on that, which stirred my heart. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh my God, is he an actual dad? I mean, I is he, he an cares. actual good person? Yeah. So he's like, I really want to focus on Cruz and make sure he has what he needs. And I just feel like if we have a whole ass baby right now, I can't do the bar plus Cruz plus focus on our marriage. Like it just feels like the wrong time. And Brittany's like, what are you talking about if we have another kid? We were going to have another kid next month. We were going to fuck next month. That's like seriously <laughs> right. what she That's goes to. That's all she thinks about. Well, because she co- told the tantric sex therapist or whatever that they don't fuck that often at all. <gasps> That's right. Like it was sex like in, twice, twice a year or something? in a year. That's wild. Very bad. So Very that's bad. really, really broke it down and bad. Yeah. But like it's weird to me because I felt like Jax explained his position. Yeah. Very cogently. He's very articulate. Like, I got it. I also felt it. I felt like he was being authentic and sincere. But, like, she just went into, I want to be a mommy. How dare you tell me I'm not a good mommy? Cruz is my whole world. What are you saying? Like, I'm like, that's not what he's trying to talk about with you. He's, like, just trying to tell you how he feels. And he's worried about this. And she gets so defensive and starts attacking him and ultimately says something like, well, you don't do anything anyway. I know, I couldn't believe she said that. And he's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, how do you think we have this house? How do you think we have this fucking show and this bar? Like, I've done so much for this family. And I believe that. But then she's like, no, we both put in money. Mm -hmm. Like, we both have been doing it. It's not just you. And it's like, dang. Well, he didn't say you didn't both do it. He's like, but he did do his share. Like, he has been showing up in these ways to create this family and this home for you. Like, what do you mean I don't do anything? Yeah. But she does not apologize. Mm-mm. She's way up in her pride here. Yeah. And he's just like, all right. He gets up and he walks out. I know. This was bad. I did see a scene, though, from next week's episode. He oh, does he come back. Okay. Sits down on the couch and they begin to talk and I guess they make up. But um, a lot of people online were saying they thought like he, Machiavellian, designed Mm. that argument so that he wouldn't have to have sex with her (gasps) like as soon as you sit down at the table you're gonna start talking about these hard ass topics Mm. that are going to trigger her and an argument then you're gonna walk out Mm. i can kind of see it i could totally see that and that's kind of what i was saying last week where like i think that he brings up all of these excuses like all the time when she's wanting to fuck Mm -hmm. like every time she's like hey can i blow you a little bit you want to put it in my butt Uh." and he's like no i'm really tired i've got a lot going on so it's just out all my cameos oh my cameos so many cameos Right? That's how you know a celebrity's going downhill when they're doing yeah. cameos yes. for money, man. Yes, we should do cameos. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would order them. Would order them. 
but maybe like one person would it would be worth it oh my god that would be hilarious but it's so many cameos like i work hard for this family God. That's what I'm saying. I feel yeah. like he probably uses this all the time. And so maybe that's why we're seeing her blow up every time he says this. Like, because it's just the same thing over and over again. And she's knowing that it's an excuse. I don't know. I've been seeing a lot of people being like, I'm Team Jax after this episode, mm -hmm. which I can totally see. Well, he see. seems very reasonable. But maybe he is a Machiavellian puppet yeah. master like Robin fucking Brown. He could be manipulating her. Yes. Ooh, that's Because she sick. says at the end, I hate when you do this. Yes. Like he does this a lot. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm 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 fake psychic predicting that. Okay. That he's total he does this all the time and he's doing this for the cameras. So he's like four levels up in the astral yeah. figuring it all out from yeah. a higher vantage point. Like a demon. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like a demon. Like a, de <laughs> like a devil. Yeah. yeah, I see it. I know. Yeah. It's totally plausible. So then we have the preview. Okay. Brittany's planning to leave and is nauseous from drinking. Yeah, so there's like a party or something and like yeah. Who was Jesse's being led around on a leash or something? And at the party, Jack says something like, Well, I guess I'm gonna have to tell everybody that you're gonna leave. And Brittany says, Well, I just don't know why I feel so nauseous about it. And he's like, Because you're drinking, because you're drunk, fucking lush, mm. you fucking addict, you fucking drunk ass ho ass. <laughs> he made a comment like that at the um dinner too, because she was talking about why can't I be emotional? And he's like, Yeah, you can't, you, you shouldn't be crying over a cruise and talking about being a mom, it's the alcohol. He said that at the oh, you're right. penthouse dinner, too. Oh, my too. God, you're right. So yeah. he's absolutely planting seeds totally. throughout this season. And I'm wondering if it's because it's in contemplation of a custody fight that he mm. knows is coming because he doesn't want to be with this <sighs> bitch. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Dude, I'm sorry, but courts usually favor the moms. They, they do. do not favor the men, usually. Well, but I mean, it happens. I mean, yeah, it does. And, I, and there's some states, and maybe California is one, where it's like automatically 50-50. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I wonder what the laws are there. And then we also have Michelle um, saying she wants Jesse to change his personality. Yeah, they're going to some sort retreat. of a spiritual camp or retreat. And where he does ayahuasca. Is that what it is? <laughs> I don't know. And maybe they're talking about like, well, what are your um, intentions? What do you want to get out of this lame ass Los Angeles spiritual <laughs> retreat? And she's like, um, for you to change your entire personality, for you to become a different person. Like, I would like you to, I would like you to grow a few inches and shut the fuck up. That is my intention for the spiritual retreat. I just remembered, um, mm. he's been called like a really short daddy. I called him a hobbit a last hobbit week, last but I guess a lot of people are calling out his Napoleonic tendencies because he's a short man, small man, small dick small man. Small dick man. I don't want no small dick man. No, honey. honey. Anyway, so he made a post saying, I'm a five, ten and a half, <laughs> which is taller than the average man in the United States of America, Stop. which is like five, nine. That means that your dick is also the average. I'm right? above average. Thanks, okay. everybody. Uh -huh. <laughs> Isn't there a song that's like short dick? Short dick. Like Little yeah. man or whatever. I love that song. That's yeah. his anthem. Yes. And then we also have Janet and Jason planning a baby shower or baby party or whatever, but they're not going to invite Kristen because they're 12 years old. Yeah. And they don't want to deal with her. Yep. And I'm sure Kristen's going to hear about it and she's going to be like, oh. I feel bad for her. She's being too. iced out of the group that she created. Girl, well, don't open your big fat mouth. That's true too. I'm sorry. Like, what do you expect? That's entirely fair. Yeah. Fuck around and find out. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I mean, imminently better. On a scale from 1 to 10 as to, as to how much better it was than VPR, I'm at a 12. Oh, same. I'm at a 100. Yeah. So much better than Vanderpump Rules. Way better. I don't know. Again, I ask, is it the same production house? Are these the same editors on the both mm, of these shows? Probably. Like, what happened with Vanderpump Rules? Probably, because they're flashing back to VPR a lot, too. They are. So I think maybe they're planning for it. I, would, I could totally see a world where they cancel VPR and then they just move it all over to the valley. Because all the people on VPR are fucking old as fuck. Get over yeah. on the valley. Yep. And I think that they have the next generation Vanderpump rules in the form of Southern House Hospitality, mm. which is another like show that's built around waitresses and wait staff yeah. in a bar. Like we already have that. Like, what do we need you people on VPR for anymore? Sheena, I'm sorry. Time's up. Good as gold. Time is up. You're not good as gold. I hope you've invested in something that has some returns Apples. other than <laughs> other than VPR. Oh God. I don't know. I, I, I don't I don't like Sheena. And I, I 
used to really like her a lot. Yeah. And I rooted for her. But like there's something about the nasal tone of her voice and the way it sounds like there's a mucus bubble in the mm-hmm. back of her throat. And she's just the way in her inflections is so like, Californian Kardashian. Uh, I'm like, oh, God. Be so for real, Sheena. <laughs> What the fuck He's are you? Are you well. AI? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like her. Maybe she's the first sentient AI. Okay. <laughs> that I can buy. <laughs> that I can buy. Sheena Shea. Well, any final thoughts on either of those programs, Beatrice? Not really. I'm kind of disappointed in VPR, but like it is what it is. At least the finale is next week. And then Thank God. on your birthday, no less. Oh my God. But we're going to be here. We are going to be here. We're going to be recording for that. Well, mm-hmm. it's not on my birthday because my birthday is on May 9th. Yeah. Well, we will be recording on your birthday. We are going to be recording it's your birthday on birthday gift. Birthday. That's right. That's what I got for my you. My birthday gift. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's so special. Uh, my birthday gift for you is that we will return yes. and... We will recap the show. Are we going to be recapping the reunions? Oh, yeah. my God. Speaking of reunions. Well, sorry. Get me back to where I was going. All right. But like apparently there's not a reunion for the Valley. What? First, Kristen said there was a reunion. Then she's like, yeah, actually, there's not a reunion. Excuse and me? if there's any Bravo show that needs a fucking reunion. It's the Valley. It is the Valley, especially if we start shooting that shit now or if we shoot that shit live after the season finale. So somebody can get up in janet's face i mean please and tell the truth well maybe Kristen blabbed about it and the producer was like Kristen, your big fat mouth maybe why don't you shut up yeah. tell everybody there's no reunion so that way we can build up to it yes maybe i'm hoping i want a reunion i want a reunion too but back to the vpr reunion so next week is the season finale uh-huh. of a dumbass dud ass season of vanderpump Bro-gas. rules there's going to be three installments of the reunion. Uh-huh. Are we going to recap that? Yeah. If they're lit. If they're, they're not going to be lit. If Beatrice, they're boring. Beatrice. Then we'll just do like a, you know, a quick recap at okay. the top of the valley. All right. We've got to talk about it. We I can't think, not talk about I it. I think any drama that's going to happen in the VPR reunion is going to happen in the third. Probably. Installment. God, so at so, the end of May. Yeah. So we're going to be fluid about this. Yeah. Gender fluid. Like for gender. We're going to be fluid about this. <laughs> And we're just going to see how it goes down. Because if I'm not inspired as a creative, (laughs) like, I don't want to, like, spend a lot of time doing something I'm not inspired by. We got a lot to cover, like MILF Manor 2. And I want to get back to Sister Wives, bitch. Me too, I miss those brows. We're about to get back to that. So certainly by June, we're going to be reincorporating that. But yeah, we've got a lot going on. We do have a lot going on. We're going to cover MILF Manor. We are probably on Patreon. Patreon. Yeah. Because it's so cringy. We're going to do like a live reaction to We'd it. We'd love to see you on Patreon. Yes. Okay, I'm drunk, girl. I got to yeah, go. You're drunk. All right, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go onto your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review. It five. really helps us grow the pod. Five, five. Please and thank you. Yes, we'll be back next week. Don't forget to recap Seeking Sister Wife, which, which is, is personally, lit. it's my favorite. So funny. I love it. So yeah. make sure you join us for that. And And until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.